Don Cock Hall. Hey, come on, Mighty Curtain Call. A program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artist on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Two weeks ago, I ventured across the island for the premier upper school public performance at the newly completed Bozich Athletic and Performing Arts Center at Maui Prep Academy in Kapalua. Willy Wonka Jr. is a karaoke musical modeled after the Disney film. Imaginatively directed by Christy Scott with marvelous musical direction by Vanya Jerome, the work is after the book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by the macabre author Ruel Dahl. With adaptations done by David Walper that Dahl disliked so much that he disowned the film. The music is by Anthony Newley and Leslie Bercuse. In this production, Willie is a female, the amazing Tessa Chin. She wants to retire. She has been on the top of the chocolate world for some time, but as the Candyman kid asked in the golden age of chocolate, but who, but who, but who? We meet the Bucket family, consisting of the paternal and maternal grandparents of Charlie, Kelsey Rule, another female playing a male, making an auspicious theatrical debut, Mr. Bucket, Gavin Ames, and Mrs. Bucket, Haley Chang. They live in abject poverty. We learn Grandpa Joe, Logan Kalar, was once employed at the chocolate factory. Then we get a terrific version of The Candyman by Cameron Henry. It's hard to hear this song without hearing Sammy Davis Jr., but Master Henry did his best to make it his own. They read about a contest. The lucky ones who find a gold ticket in their candy bar will win a personal tour conducted by Maestra herself, Willy Wonka, and a lifetime supply of chocolate. Then it's the countdown as one after another, the gold tickets are found all over the world. Reported by Phineas Trout, Anna Mae Stoops, in Dusselheim, Germany, where we meet Augustus Gloop, Landon Long, a gluttonous chocoholic in Lederhosen. His mother, Samatha Teschler, then sings the song, I Eat More, where she details his daily outrageous menu regime while he intones, I eat more. Next, we went to England, Veruca Salt, Kalaya Strong, who is the definition of spoiled brat, never actually finds the golden ticket. Her father, Kai Goodwin, sets the men in his peanut shelling factory to open millions of Wonka bars until they find the ticket and present it to the horror so she can claim victory. Next came one of the really great musical moments in the show. After Charlie learns his dad has lost his job, when the factory he worked in was closed, they did a duet on Think Positive with lines like from Papa Bucket, you're wasting your time to count the cost and the answer from Charlie, cause thinking positive, that comes free. This song sent vibrant vibes across the packed house. Then to California for Violet Beauregard, Addie Teschler, the third golden ticket finder. Violet is a self-centered child obsessed with chewing gum. The fourth ticket finder is Mike TV, Isabella Andrade, another female playing a male character who lives in a suburban neighborhood where he could care less about visiting the chocolate factory. He is as obsessed with TV as Violet is with gum. The final ticket is found by Charlie. After the candy man, Cameron Henry, drops a coin on the ground and Charlie finds it. He has such integrity, he has to be convinced to take the coin. He buys a bar to share with his family, and it has the final golden ticket. In Act Two, the winners meet up with the enigmatic and slightly malevolent Willy Wonka, who promptly announces no tasting the chocolate, no chewing gum, and no TV in the factory. She conducts them on a tour. One by one, the winners succumb to their selfishness and obsessions, and they meet unfortunate fates. Ms. Wonka seems to not care what happens to them. Finally, Charlie is the last one standing. However, he too broke the rules, but he has successfully kept this knowledge from Ms. Wonka. Burdened by a guilty conscience, Charlie tells Ms. Wonka of his indiscretion, and rather than chastise him, she reveals that he is the one she has been searching for. He will be the next Willy Wonka, and his family may join him. It all turns out happily ever after. When the show began, the lights went down and the opening tune, Pure Imagination, began. As colored lights danced on the curtain, I wondered why they were having a recording of the song playing instead of Willy Wonka singing it live. 
Then the curtains parted, and it wasn't a recording. Tessa Chin burst forth through them. She had been singing from backstage. Her voice is Broadway quality, big, bold, and mature beyond her years. Willy Wonka has to be like the ringmaster and the lion tamer in the circus. Ms. Chin filled both of those roles admirably. She was in control every moment. She anticipated the bad kids' moves, had a ready counter to them, and she had that unique, unsettling kind of menacing quality Roald Dahl built into this character. As Charlie Bucket, it's hard to believe this was Ms. Rule's theatrical debut. First off, she was playing a different gender. Ms. Rule and Gavin Ames, as her dad, took on the first act big song, Think Positive, with gusto and assurance, and acquitted themselves handsomely. And her finale in the first act, I've Got a Golden Ticket, made the audience long for a very short intermission. In the second act, his duets on flying and the burping song with Logan Kalar as Grandpa Joe were another high point in the show. The singing in this show was by and large top-notch. Haley Chang as Mrs. Bucket showed off a very nice chest voice on Cheer Up Charlie, and the choral numbers were all well done. The Oompa Loompas were so much fun, their dancing and singing was terrific. The choreography by Jackie Dowsett was one of the real surprises in this show. It is clear that there are several dancers in this cast. Standouts were Abby Rogers, Kaya Reeder, and Giselle Wells, who played Oompa Loompas and kids. The other aspect of the show that moved it to another level were the costumes by Mary Beth Chin and Haga Hansen. Yes, Mrs. Chin is Willy Wonka's mom, and she is the wife of Ray Chin, an elite sponsor and the show's photographer. The Chins are a paragon of parenting. I asked Mrs. Chin if she rented the costumes. They were that good. She told me, quote, I have been working with Maui Prep's program and the Theater Theater Maui program for about 12 years doing costumes. Between the two programs, we have amassed a collection of stuff that I adapt for whatever show we are doing with strategic accents. For this show, I purchased Willy Wonka's coat, Veruca's dress, Violet's blow-up suit, and the Oompa Loompa's lab coats, and a few other things. I made some items as well, Oompa Loompa wigs, Veruca's nuts bag, and various other costumes that don't require much skill. But most of the costumes came from our store of costumes, which is actually housed in a rusty shipping container behind a building on campus, unquote. She is too modest. She also was listed as producer. She told me that role was to provide for the needs that were expressed in the production meetings. Another parent volunteer, Jennifer Casper, was the set designer, and there were a lot of them, and they all worked. I especially liked the way she did the flying set. The lighting by Mishkin Darakshan and the ubiquitous Ricky Jones did what lighting is supposed to do. I particularly liked the clever golden ticket scoreboard. Very clever. Christy Scott's imaginative staging and direction came out every moment, and the Maui Prep students are blessed to have such a talented and experienced theater person at the helm of their theater program. I look forward to future endeavors. Accolades go to Vanya Jerome for investing nearly two decades building this outstanding program. Now she has Christy Scott, Jackie Dowsett, and a student teacher, Megan Barton, to help bring this program to the next level. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, I'll be reviewing She Kills Monsters. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahoy ho!